every time I went in my 20s, I never got a, a solution. Like, I, nobody ever gave me a diagnosis. You probably have arthritis, Rocky Mountain spotted fever. You're a busy mom. I think you're just you being very vain, is what he told me. It took me six years to get diagnosed. It had to take like my kidneys to almost fail for them to give me like a diagnosis of lupus. We call it the disease of the thousand faces or also the great imitator because it can present in so many different ways. And that's what makes it sometimes hard to diagnose. Our immune systems are designed to detect things in the environment that may harm us. It shouldn't attack what's ours. In autoimmune diseases, this distinction is blurred or lost. Our immune system is trying to make us sick instead of protecting us. I just wish there was a better way that patients can get that diagnosis without having to go through all of the pain and all of like the dismissiveness and the gaslighting that, that you go through from doctors that like aren't really listening to you. Oh my God. Lupus patients make a substance that, you know, when you get sick with a virus, for a few days you feel achy and no energy and that's how, it's the same substance that lupus patients make chronically for years and years. And so they feel like that every single day. You're just surviving all the time. When I'm out in the sun, but I just get completely overworked. Even if it's for like 30 minutes, you feel like you've been like running a marathon. You're probably gonna have a flare if you are out there for too long. I get headaches get swelling, sometimes I can't walk, I get stomach pain, the constant fevers. You just have fevers all the time. You have mouth sores all the time. We have our first in-person support group meeting. I, it just feels like they're family and, you know, that I can talk to them about things uh, going on with my, my lupus and they just, they just get it. Hi. How are you? Good, how are you? Good. Okay, I just feel like the last two weeks has just been like terrible. I've had like horrible edema, like swelling in my legs, and to the point where I couldn't walk for like two days. Because it's just the same thing, swelling in my feet and the aches and the pains, and it's just... It's horrible. It is. Oh, I think I'm just gonna have to change my medication again. Every time I go to the doctor uh, to get my, my infusions, the nurse can see what I have. She says, she always says, are you having pain today? It's like a six. Is it general pain or is it okay? Is it more? You have pain, like your baseline is you have pain all the time. And there's no specific place, right? Like it's everywhere. Everywhere hurts all the time. Yep. There's a lot of shame that comes with it because you look normal, right? People see you and they don't think you have this horrible disease that you're walking around with. And so I never wanted to talk about it, especially um, my kids. Like I wanted them to, to know that I was going to be okay. You need more like flour in your hands or something. Yeah, I don't. Nine minutes and thirty seconds. Come on. So I'll give you no. like a piece of toast. I, don't think, I think if I left it in for longer, it would have burned. burned. <laughs> it would have been soggy. I think it's also been challenging to treat uh, lupus because not everyone responds the same way to the medications we have. The, the way the science is evolving um, may lead us to. A, a better understanding of what causes these diseases, uh, what perpetuates them, and how to prevent them or, or treat them in, in the future.
lupus, how to treat lupus nephritis. So we have a tremendous amount of research going on in our labs. Lupus is not who I am. The diagnosis doesn't mean that it's terminal, that your, your life ends. My life is going to be a little bit different, but I can still live a full life. Okay.